everybody! Hey everybody, welcome back to... Well, it's not the final episode of Plants vs. Zombies, but it's the final episode of our main adventure playthrough of Plants vs. Zombies. We're on the roof and we just have five levels left to complete, and these last five levels are definitely going to be interesting. So without further ado, let's finish this adventure, shall we? Unfortunately, we got some nasty stuff waiting for us here. So, we're back on the roof. We got a new zombie type, the catapult zombie. So we've been throwing, using our catapults to hit the zombies. Well, um, they're about to fight back. This guy basically has a motorized vehicle with a basketball hoop and will lob basketballs at us when he appears. And the basketballs will basically hit plants back in the lane and damage them from a distance. So he can take out plants from a distance, which makes him pretty dangerous. He also has a good amount of HP, so... We'll need to have some tricks up our sleeve, but fortunately we have a new plant at our disposal now. I'm not sure how good this plant's gonna be at diverting the catapult zombies, but it's a very interesting plant. It's garlic. Diverts zombies into other lanes. So, if you put garlic down, a zombie, when it reaches it, will take a bite of the garlic, like make a nasty face, and then move to a different lane. So it'll he'll either move to the lane above him or below him. So if you put it at the top of the lane, it'll guaranteed make the zombie go down. If you put it at the bottom, it'll guaranteed make the zombie go up. And if you put it in the middle lane, there's a 50-50 chance whether the zombie will go one lane up or one lane down. Using garlic, this makes it possible to completely shut down certain lanes and make it so that zombies cannot go through there at all. Which means that you only really have to protect however many lanes don't have garlic. I mean, if you put garlic in every lane, then it kind of defeats the purpose. But otherwise... You only have to focus on a couple of lanes. You can choose some lanes to just filter all zombies out of, but this is a double-edged sword. For one, this means that there will be far more zombies coming down the lanes without garlic than the ones with garlic, so you'll need to make sure you've got a lot of really good defenses in there in order to repel the attacks. The other reason is that there are quite a few there are, well, not quite a few, but there are some enemies in the game that can bypass garlic. The biggest example being the pogo zombie. Pogo zombie will just hop right over the garlic like it's nothing. So you gotta account for that, but it should work pretty nicely on this level. So, we get sunflower, we get flower pot, I'm gonna take garlic, just because I want to show it off. Now, if we're bringing garlic, my goal is I'm gonna shut down the top and the bottom lane, so I only have to focus on the middle three. So, as a result of this, I'm actually going to bring starfruit. Because starfruit plus garlic is a very powerful combination. It's not gonna work as well on the roof because of the, sl the slope tiles, but at the very least, some of the tiles here are flat, and starfruit will be incredibly useful at dealing with them. I also want squash. Squash is going to be very useful on this level, not just for taking out the first couple zombies, but for dealing with the stupid catapult zombies. We're going to take Colonel Polt, because he's good. And who else? I also am going to take Jalapeno. Being able to destroy an entire lane if you're using garlic to make some of your lanes more inflated will actually be very, very useful. And should I take... what else should I take, if anything? Ah, uh, that, I think, should be pretty sufficient. Using garlic is one of the cases where Snow Pea won't be able to really keep up. I'll bring Cherry Bomb. Again, I don't know how many catapult zombies are coming, but if there are a lot of catapult zombies, I want to take them out quickly, and I want to make sure I have an instant death plant to do so. So, yeah. Garlic is a very fun plant to use. It's one of my favorites. And honestly, I mentioned that there were zombies that could bypass it, like the pogo zombie. Like, pole vaulting zombie technically can too, but as long as you put, like, a garlic behind the other garlic, he'll hop over one garlic, then hit the other one. So it really doesn't matter. Really, there are very few zombies that can actually completely bypass it. So it works most of the time. And it just, it makes it, it opens up a bunch of new strategies. The main advantage of using it is, again, starfruit. It, garlic makes starfruit, like, go from, like, an above average, but, like, kind of hard to use plant to, like, a stupidly good plant, as you're going to see. Oh, shoot, that's not the place I was going to put a sunflower there. Well, okay. <laughs> now this is going to trigger everybody's OCD, because I'm going to be putting sunflowers in weird places now. Oh well, people will get over it. Also, garlic has a deceptively high amount of HP. Like, it's not as much as something like a walnut, because again, zombies just bunch on it very slowly. But they still have a decent amount of HP, for what you might expect. 
All right. Let's get our first garlic out. I'm going to put the garlic all the way up here. Like, as close to that lane as possible. So that way I can maximize the amount of flat tiles that I can put starfruit on. Oh wow, garlic actually has a faster recharge than I remember. That's cool. Yeah, as you can see, he took one bite of the garlic, made a nasty face, and then decided he, does, he doesn't want anything to do with that. So Starford's gonna be great because it, it'll really help us to... <laughs> because more zombies will be going in this lane and this lane, the Starford's ability to shoot down and diagonally will really help us just shred those zombies. Go. Starfruit really flourish on the pool levels where they can shoot in the water, and then on the any level where you use garlic. So this is fun because this is just a very different strategy than what I usually use. And I also real oh I messed up. I I was originally planning on putting all my sunflowers in the two lanes that had the garlic in them. Oh, well. And again, you can put starfruit on the, the first, on the rightmost sloped tiles, and they'll still work just fine. And now we'll start building up more kernel bolts. Oh, shoot. I should not put the garlic... Oh, no. I made it. I messed up. I should not have put the garlic this close, because the catapult zombies... They stay to the back of the lane, but they're still going to run over our garlic in one shot like the Zomboni. They don't move past that first tile, I don't think, or maybe the second tile. Well, I mean, we don't have to worry about it yet, but he's event they're eventually going to run over the garlic. Okay, yep, here he is. Get rid of him as soon as possible. So much yellow. I love hearing the sound like of got zombies enjoying garlic. Now, garlic is one of my favorite foods, but I fully agree that uh, raw garlic is nasty. You can't eat raw garlic. Well, I mean, you can, but uh, I don't think you're going to enjoy it very much. No, my starfruit that I just planted. Not Starry the starfruit. Well, thankfully, none of the catapult zombies have uh, moved on top of my garlic. Oh dang, he just he just spontaneously combusted. I mean, because I beat him up enough. See, that's why I love squash so much. They're great at the beginning of the match, but you can even then just pull them out of nowhere later on. Oh my gosh. My s yeah. So remember how I said Starfruit were really, really good if you knew how to use them? Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. Starfruit will wreck you real hard <laughs> if you underestimate them. And again, one Starfruit by itself ain't gonna be doing much. If you got like 10 starfruit though, in the right places with the right setup. Ooh. Watch how fast this guy dies. <laughs> That's the power of starfruit. And this is the power of cherry bombs! On a level where you use garlic. Oh boy, and I've been waiting for this one. This would have been helpful to have. Much earlier in the roof levels, but here we go. It's the Umbrella Leaf. Costs 100 sun. Protects nearby plants from bungees and catapults. This is a nice plant to have on the rooftop levels, because this means you don't have to worry about bungee zombies or catapult zombies anymore. 
and I'll be showing off how to use that. So it only protects a small area. It only protects the adjacent plants in the free by free area around it. All right, so for this level, we want sunflowers. We want flower pots. We want umbrella leaves. We got ladder zombie, so I think ladder zombie will bypass the garlic, so I don't want to deal with that. We'll have Colonel Polt. <laughs> Salutes Colonel Polt. Uh, and oh yeah, the one thing about Umbrella Leaf is it's gonna make my sunflowers in a weird area, but I'll, I'll go into that once we get here. Um, let's see. If we got ladder zombies... I think it might be time to bring back the magnet shrooms and pumpkins. And I want more power this time, so I'll also bring up all my good friend. No, wait. Oh, no. I need squash for the beginning and for later on. All right. No, I, I really. No, no. I don't want to. I don't want to have another round like this. Um, yeah. Sorry. Forget that. I want repeater. My buddy repeater. I want snow pea. And I want Cherry Bomb. Here we go. I don't want another super slow round like last uh, game. Or like last video. Where I only had Colonel Pulse as my attack. Like, you'll get, they'll definitely get the job done, but they'll take a while. Alright, so I want to set up my plants in such a way that Umbrella Leafs will be protecting all of them. So, we gotta design around that. So I'm gonna put an Umbrella Leaf here and an Umbrella Leaf there. In order to protect my sunflowers. This also means that I won't be at my usual 10 sunflower count if I ignore those two spots, so... I might end up putting some... making some extra sunflowers. I told you my sunflowers were going to be weird on this level. <laughs> yep, that's how my sunflowers are going to be organized. <laughs> Put an umbrella leaf there, and I'll protect this spot. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. My sneezes come in twos. All right, come on, finish him. Good. Yeah, you might be wondering why I'm putting these guys in weird places. It's all in preparation of mentally preparing my umbrella leaf. Uh, my umbrella leaves. So for example, we need another umbrella leaf right here to protect this area, and then we need another umbrella leaf there. There we go, and that should protect any of the plants that I will be making this level. Now we need to start bringing our attention to offense again. Not that much offense, though. I guess if we put any plants beyond this column, 
they'll be subject to catapults and bungee zombies, but the catapult plants never, ever launch their basketballs that close. And bungee zombies rarely go that close as well, so I think we'll be safe. Alright, now we're gonna pull out the repeaters. Because I miss having that kind of power. Yeah, so watch the bungee zombie goes here. Boing! Get out of here. Very satisfying. Yeah, so this is this is a good example of a level where garlic just wouldn't be that good on. Ladder zombies can throw a wrench into garlic strategies. Oh, what's that? You're trying to take him? Nope. Not today, Zerg. Oh, what's this? Get out of here. So if I didn't... Because I didn't bring any defensive plants, the... Ladder zombies are not even going to ever use their ladders. It just will give them a little more HP. It's also important to note that for some reason, the ladder zombies move quickly, but after their ladder gets destroyed, they move more slowly, when you'd think it would be the opposite, but no. Once their ladder gets destroyed, they're susceptible to being frozen, and they also uh, get slower for some reason. They basically revert into a regular zombie. Oh man. I forgot, the catapult zombies definitely have a lot less HP than, uh, say, <laughs> the Zombonies. Ah, uh, Repeater, it's good to have you back. Repeater really does pack quite a punch. We really mean business now. We're building a third column of repeaters. Man, we haven't even get to see the the umbrella leaves block the the basketballs being tossed because we've been just killing them so quickly and hitting them with butter so that way they can't actually launch anything. Don't want to be in the way when the repeaters go off. Uh-oh, he's going to try to take my repeater. Will we actually kill him in time? Nope. Even when we slow him down and all of that, he still takes the repeater. He's like, I know, I'll take the thing that keeps bouncing me away from the plants. It's like, well, that's not how that works. Yeah. Bring these zombies to justice. Hug boom! Love you, squash. Alright, huge wave of zombies. Here comes the final wave. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> Take that. Cherry Bomb really helps out with those huge waves. All right, and here we go. We get a, one of the only plants of the game that's actually really bad. It's the Marigold. Gives you silver and gold coins. So, first look, it looks like a sunflower that instead of giving you sun, gives you in-game currency. Now you might be thinking, well, hey, that's actually pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of expensive stuff at the shop, right? That'll help us, right? 
wrong. This plant is really bad, and I'll I'll tell you why. Uh, if you think it's like a sunflower, it's not. It doesn't generate coins nearly as quickly as sunflowers generate sun. It generates a coin like once every 30 seconds. It almost always gives you a silver coin, which is just $10 in-game. And um, it only very rarely gives you gold coins. It has a slow recharge, so you can't even spam plant them. And if if you're if you're thinking, why well, about if we get like one zombie left on the course and just keep them indefinitely alive and plant a field of these, eventually we'll get a huge amount of money, right? Nope. Uh, after after a while, the marigolds just flat out stop generating money for you. Like general, I think it's after like five minutes. Maybe it's closer to like six minutes. Marigolds just stop generating coins entirely, so... Yeah, you're not actually going to make very much money using Marigolds at all. Not to mention that, even if you could, like, there are way better ways in this game of making money, so... I don't recommend really ever using Marigold. I mean, I'm gonna use it at some point. But probably not in Adventure Mode, because, uh, we actually really gotta put on our big boy boots now, because... We have a new zombie approaching! It's the last type of zombie. It's the Gargantua. It is terrifying. It is massive. It has far more HP than any other type of zombie in the entire game. And it will one-hit kill all of the plants that it comes across. Even if you have a tall nut with a pumpkin around it, it will crush it in one hit. Thankfully, it is also very, very slow. So, we will at least have some time to deal with him. But here's the issue. He has so much HP that even one-hit kill plants like Squash, Cherry Bomb, and Jalapeno, they will not kill him in one hit. <laughs> They'll have to kill him in two hits. And after he loses half his HP, see this little zombie on top? That's an imp. He will pick up that zombie and throw him back towards like the back of your lawn, generally bypassing most of your defenses. And even if he's weak and can die pretty quickly, he is fast and can eat. Your, and if he gets thrown behind all of your defenses, then uh, it can be bad news bears. So yeah, Gargantuar is nasty. We gotta watch out for him. So we want sunflower. We want flower pot. We want kernel pult. I will not be taking umbrella leaf because I don't think bungee zombies are that big of a deal. Also, in case you're wondering, umbrella leaves do not protect you from the imp being thrown. Even though it would make sense if they did, they don't. So there. We definitely want squash, 100%, for the beginning, and squash is really good for taking on the Gargantuars. Snow Pea is going to be very useful for making the Gargantuar uh, get, frozen, uh, get frozen and slow down even more. And in case you're wondering, uh, Gargantuar does not get affected by garlic. He will just crush the garlic. He did, Gargantuar doesn't eat. Gargantuar just smashes things with that telephone pole that he has. We want repeater. Uh, what else? Pumpkin doesn't really matter for Gargantuar. Um, cherry Bomb for Gargantuar. This, oh, I guess this is one area. Chopper can do all right against Gargantuar, because here's the thing. Chopper normally devours things in one hit. Chopper cannot eat Gargantuar. It's too big. So what Chopper will basically do instead is bite, and the bite has the same power as an instant kill plant, like a... Uh, squash, but if he bites and then doesn't actually kill, he'll bite again pretty rapidly afterwards. Now, the thing is, with how Gargantuar works, under normal situations, if Chomper bites the Gargantuar, then he'll bite him once and then the Gargantuar will smash him. But if you can slow the Gargantuar down enough with, like, butter, then the Chomper can actually bite him twice and kill the Gargantuar without actually getting, without chewing. It's difficult to do, but it's possible. I, it's too difficult for me to pull off, like... It's, it's kind of luck-based. I guess I'll take Marigold. I'll show you how bad it is. Ready, set, plant. Marigold is really bad, folks. Like, I'm, I'm just here to tell you. Like, as you can see, it, it's, it's a pretty slow at charging up. If it had the same charge speed as a Sunflower, I could see the appeal. But it doesn't. Squash is our best friend. In case you didn't know, Squash is one of the best plants in the game. Like, again, he there's no way he's carrying your entire army on his back, but he is really, really... He's a very helpful assist plant. Especially against Gargantuars. Alright, we'll plant a Marigold. I will plant Marigolds just to show you how bad they are. Because, again... You might think, oh, but, like, you're going to be picking up a lot more coins. Well, yes, I w that is correct. I will be picking up a lot more coins. 
But most of the coins that we get don't come from just picking up silver coins that happen upon the, uh, the course. Most of the money that we get comes from beating these levels, because we get, like, a thousand gold per level. Or something close like that. Wow, gold coin! That's nice. Here, I'll, I'll plant a column of marigolds. That's probably all we'll have time. Well, no, we've got two huge waves on this level. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to changing my mind about marigold, just so people know. I probably will not change my mind about it, but hey, I'm, I'm keeping an open mind. Get him squash. It's also annoying if the bungee zombies carry away your marigolds. Because they don't come cheap. But just keep an eye out. Eventually... I'm not sure if it's like eventually they stop generating coins just after enough time passes. Or if it's if you have too many marigolds on screen, they like the older ones will stop generating coins. But I have planted a field with like 50 marigolds where there's like marigolds basically in every square except two. And most of them just flat out were not generating coins. Only the ones I had most recently planted were ever generating coins. And again, this was this was in the iPhone version, so maybe it's something changed for the game of the year edition on Steam. Again, I'm, I'm gonna show off every single plant in the game. Even the ones that really hardcore suck. But fortunately, there are very few plants in this game that I would say hardcore suck. Most of them have at least some use. Okay, you know what? Maybe Marigolds will help out us slightly earlier on before we get some of these better options of making money. Because we actually have made like a thousand dollars almost. Alright, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll change my mind about this. Oh shoot, he was about to give me coins. Alright, I'll start shoving away some of my sunflowers to make room for more marigolds. I'll keep this going. Okay, yeah, they're generating coins a lot more frequently than they were in the iPhone version, so maybe, maybe they buffed them. I would welcome that. Marigold, it was a plant that I think deserved a buff. I don't think we'll be seeing the Gargantuar until the end. It's too much stuff to click on. Blech. Oh, nope, never mind. Here comes the Gargantuar. All right, I'm going to try to time this. I want to time it because, again, once half his HP is gone, he throws his imp. I want to time it so, like, right around the time I think he loses half of his HP, we can hit him with an insta-kill. Because if we do that, it's possible to kill him in one hit with, like, an insta-kill before he can throw his imp. So we want to take... Okay, so he start. His arm got bandaged, so that means he's lost a good amount of HP. So I think at this point, I will squash him. Yes, perfect! That was... That was... Excellent timing. Alright, I'm not going to shovel any away my, my any more sunflowers for a little bit, just because I want to build up my repeaters. At least one column of repeaters. Alright, the marigolds are helping out more than I thought. I mean, they're, not, they're doing nothing to help the battle, but they're definitely helping me win the war, so to speak. Alright, alright, maybe I misjudged marigold. As far, like, I've made a mental tier list of the plants, and I would normally put Marigold in F tier with Gold Magnet Shroom. But you know what? Maybe, they, maybe they're D tier. I'll have to think about it. It's, it's weird because they're used for a very different purpose than every other plant in the entire game. Yeah. So 
many coins. Okay, I think I was about to hit 11,000 when this level started, so I'm not sure actually how much money I've actually gotten from the Marigolds. Maybe some eagle-eyed watcher of mine will be like, Oh my gosh, I saw you collected exactly this much money from the Marigolds. Alright, here comes the final wave. Alright, here comes Gargantua Man. Uh-oh. Yes, I hit him with two insta-kill plants before he could even throw the imp. That's great. Trust me, that imp is super annoying. He would have been thrown o over all my enemies, and I would have to I would have to remove one of these guys and put something like a squash there. And my squash is on cooldown, so. Alright, this is the last plant we get in adventure mode, and we kind of saved the best for last, so to speak. This here is Melon Pult. Does heavy damage to groups of zombies. This guy lobs watermelons at zombies. And as you might imagine, watermelons pack quite a punch. And, as you also might imagine, this guy is a very expensive plant. He is 300 sun, the only plant in the game that we have thus far that costs more than that is the Free Peter. Which costs 25 more sun, but unlike Free Peter, Melon Pult is really, really good. <laughs> We're gonna be using him. Alright, on this level we got a whole bunch of annoying zombies. Bungie zombies, catapult zombies, uh, gargantuars, yada yada. Alright, let's bring sunflowers, let's bring them flower pots. We want squash, we want melon pults, we want kernel pults, because kernel pults will help us early on before we have enough sun for the melon pults. Um, we want umbrella leaf, we want snow pea, and, uh, let's go cherry bomb. I've picked, I've picked cherry bomb more in this playthrough than I have in basically any other playthrough. And I love it. strategy for umbrella leaf placement here comes the zombies hopefully that my new strategy for the umbrella leaves will look a little more elegant and not trigger everybody's uh ocd <laughs> oh boy this is gonna be a long one yeah this is the last normal level of the game level five uh level five dash nine we only have the final level after this and as you all know Level 10 of a world is always a conveyor belt level. And it's gonna be a tough one. Well, I say that, but it, again, this game's not too difficult, so. So yeah, I'm gonna put all my sunflowers here, so I'll have one less sunflower by doing this. I'll have nine instead of ten, but that's okay. We can make do with just nine, it won't make that much of a difference. Save up for them melon pults. I freaking love squash. They're so good. This is good, yes. So we can. Alright, change of plants. We're gonna put a snow pea there. Snow pea is more effective than a kernel pult is. It's also almost twice the price, so you would expect that. So I'm trying to shake up my strategies every once in a while, since so not just you watch the exact same thing every single time. And I want, again, I want to give every plant a fair shake. I, there are some plants that I definitely look down on more than others. That doesn't mean they're inherently bad, it just means I don't like them as much. So I guess I'm still putting the umbrella leaf here and here and here and here. The difference is that by putting my sunflowers here, I should hopefully have the same amount of offensive plants in every single lane. Whereas 
Last time I used Umbrella Leaf, I had less. It, I had less offensive plants in the lanes that had Umbrella Leaf in them. And again, because I have to put Umbrella Leaves here, I gotta move the Snow Peas in a slightly different area. That should be okay, though. Uh, we'll squash that guy. He had enough HP that a Snow Pea with the Colonel Polt would not be able to finish him off. Unless Colonel Polt got really lucky and pulled Butter over and over again. There we go. Alright, I'll start putting in the Umbrella Leaves now. Never know when Bungie... Zombies are going to show up, especially around a huge wave, which we're about to activate the first huge wave, so. Ugh. Darn it, I was too late. No! I, if only I could have planted that umbrella leaf a little bit sooner. Oh no, not you. I haven't even pulled out Melon Pult yet. Melon Pult's gonna be amazing. Yeah, so I haven't even described Melon Pult. So Melon Pult lobs watermelons. So as you might imagine, the watermelons do a lot of damage. They are the single most powerful projectile in the game. Outside of things like cherry bombs, obviously. But it, they not only not only do the melon pulls deal massive damage to the guy that they uh, the watermelon lands on, the watermelon itself will explode upon being thrown on him. So watch. So as you can see, it kind of breaks into chunks, and that deals splash damage to any nearby zombies, and not just like right next to them, like the uh, fireballs uh, from the torch would do. It hits every single zombie within a free, like a one square radius from it, so in a free by free area. Now the splash damage doesn't do nearly as much damage as the watermelon itself, but it still does a decent amount, and it adds up. And again, it hits every single zombie in its range. So yeah, uh, melon pult is really, really, really good. <laughs> Because, like, not only does it deal massive damage, but it also damages the yeah, clusters of zombies. So even if you've got, like, a massive amount of zombies moving towards you, as long as you've got, like, a decent amount of, mel like, a melon pulse or two in every lane, like, you're just gonna plow through that huge wave like it's nothing. So yeah, definitely one of my absolute favorite plants in the game. Definitely a top-tier plant. It is well worth the 300 uh, sun price tag. And because this is a longer level, we'll have more than enough time to build up our sun, so that way we can unleash Havoc. Melon Pults are not as viable on short levels. Like, if it's only one huge wave, don't bother with Melon Pults, because by the time you can actually afford one, it'll be time for the huge wave anyways, so it, you won't really be able to use them in time. But for a free flag level, oh yeah, Melon Pults are definitely worth it. And naturally, because of the splash damage, Melon Pults are slightly better if you can put them in the middle lanes, but you still definitely want to put them in the upper and lower lanes too, because again, that initial damage from the Watermelon attack is so incredibly high. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm going to put more Melon Pults around here. So I guess this time, the... <laughs> the Melon... the uh, Umbrella Leaf lanes will actually have more firepower than the other lanes, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop goes the weasel and all that. You're no match for our watermelons. Yeah, so, like, I'm only lobbing the watermelon technically at that little zombie, but the other guy's getting affected, too. Not as much, though, so we're gonna squash him. I don't even need defensive plants like walnuts or pumpkins. If you're, here's the thing, if your offense is good enough, you don't need defense. <laughs> the best the best defense is a good offense, I think the saying goes. Oh yeah, <laughs> that looks like that zombie lost his head. You know, most, most of the time, like I think about this from the zombie's perspective, I'm like, most of these plants wouldn't really hurt. Like, 
if you get shot with a pea, that's not really going to do much to you. But if you get a watermelon lobbed on your head, that actually is going to hurt a lot. So, <laughs> respect. And yeah, they saved the watermelon, the melon pulp for last. Because I guess it would maybe be a little too good if you got it earlier. And, you know, if we have time, well, we, we won't. We're, we're not going to run out of space before the final huge wave comes. I was going to be we can always remove our kernel bolts and replace them with melon bolts. But the kernel bolts actually are fulfilling an important job, too. So if I, if I don't have enough time to put a melon bolt, another melon bolt in every lane, I'm just going to prioritize putting them in the middle lanes. Because, again, that splash damage will be more effective that way. Shaka Laka. Here comes the Gargantua. I was wondering when they were going to show up. Oh no, he crushed my... He crushed my flower pot before I could put a cherry bomb on it. I want to show off what happens when you actually trigger the imp. So here we go. So that's what happens when he froze the imp. He froze it over pretty he froze it over a huge amount of the lanes. Thankfully we had enough firepower back there that we could defeat him easily. And he dies, and we'll squash this guy. Here we go. We have officially defended our roof, and now we're ready for the final level. What's the final note say? Homeowner, you have failed to submit to our rightful claim. Be advised that unless you comply, we will be forced to take extreme action. Please... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what does that say? Please... Remit? Does it say remit? R-E... That looks like an M-I-T. What? That, that's... Is that a word? Please remit your house and brains to us forthwith. Sincerely, Edgar... Dr. Edgar Zombos. He you know, has very nice handwriting and very proper English. He's, he's using words that even I don't know, so Dr. Edgar Zambas must be uh, one heck of a guy. Well, next level, now we're night at the roof. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's here. Better get ready. This is going to be one heck of a fight. Listen, though, I know what his weakness is. You got to hit him in the pancreas. Uh, no, wait, that was a different guy. Uh, you have to, um, kick him in the... Mm. You have to press up, up, down, down, left, right... Uh, wait, I remember. It's... Oh no, Crazy Dave! He got taken by the zombies. It's a nighttime on the roof. The one night roof level. And oh, That's a big zombie. So this is the final boss and the only real boss of the game. Dr. Zomboss. And he's... 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 He's definitely a fun fight. He can be a, a tricky fight, but he's very fun. So it's a conveyor belt level. Hold on to your jalapenos and your ice shrooms. Melon bolts will go in the back. Because they're more valuable. This is cool. So he'll just kind of chill and drop random zombies for us to fight. So we can use these to fend him off. Eventually, though, he'll lower himself down and that's where uh, we can start attacking him. Because instead of being like a kill all the zombies level, it is destroy the boss. And this meter down here is not how close you are to each huge wave. It's That's actually his, how much damage you've dealt. So we've done no damage to him right now. Alright, here we go. Once he comes down here, you can use jalapenos to rack up a ton of damage. Watch his eyes go. So his eyes go lead. He's going to make a giant fireball. When that happens, use an ice shroom to remove it. This will also freeze him in place, allowing us time to start pelting him with a bunch of stuff. No, not a bucket head. Also, this is really good boss music. So Dr. Zomboss is definitely, like, he's a great final fight. Like, he's not super difficult, but he definitely puts up a fight. Alright, 
right, we, we gotta get rid of those two guys. We haven't gotten any Colonel Pulse yet, which is interesting. Oh yeah. And also, when he's down here, any of your plants will hit him, no matter where they are in the lane. Alright, so what's he gonna do now? Is he gonna make another fireball? No, this time he's making an ice ball. So plant a jalapeno in the lane that the ice ball appears, and it'll melt that. Otherwise, it'll go forward and destroy your plants. And you don't want that. Oh boy, pole vaulting zombie. Let's slow him down a bit. Surprised they haven't gotten any Colonel Pulse yet. Uh oh, that's not good. Alright, let's see what Zomboss does before we react. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna time this jalapeno, jalapeno. Jalapenos are going to be the way you rack up the most damage against the boss, because again, jalapenos just have so much attack power. Enough to one-hit kill almost any zombie. No! Those are mine! No! My melon pole. Also, fun fact, the pogo zombies actually don't get completely frozen by the ice shrooms. Uh-oh. No, thank you. Boom! Get out of here, Zomboni. Alright, he's almost halfway down. We're really glad- I'm really glad he's not just using his mecha to stomp over all my plants. Because that's definitely what I would do. Oh, he grabbed my entire top lane of plants. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> oh, screen door zombie, you're terrible. All of my plants are catapult plants. So yeah, <laughs> screen door made no difference at all. Ooh, gem. Yes, please. Oh no, he hopped over the first flower pot. What will I do? There we go. That racked up a lot of damage. He's like, no, oh, these stupid jalapenos. Is he gonna do it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's a nasty attack. So that's his van attack. He just froze a van, which will crush, like, six of your plants. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's just throw guys down that lane. Uh-oh. Hey, how about you give me some, uh, catapult plants again? There- finally! I, I've been waiting for the kernel pulse! Good lord! Like, I cannot believe it took me that long to get a kernel- again. These conveyor belt levels are completely luck-based, basically what, uh, what you end up getting. Oh man, if I waited just a little bit more. All right, look at that. He's he's getting close to death now. Oh yes, three jalapenos in a row. No, no, I just rebuilt those plants. <laughs> And of course, he immediately starts sending zombies down those two empty lanes. Zomboni. Alright. How about giving me some catapult plants? I know, the game definitely wants to make sure you have enough ice and fire plants, so that way you can counteract Zomboss's moves, but, like, still. I kind of need something a little more substantial than this. C 
cool. That finished up the Gargantua. That's nice. If I get another Jalapeno, I might be able to take him down. Oh. He's so close to death. He's so close! Oh man, if only I'd gotten that a little earlier, I think that would have finished him off. Okay, you can take those empty potted plants, that's fine. I do not mind that. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, say goodbye, Zombots. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> That's a fun final fight. And he drops a trophy. Woohoo! That gives us the home on security achievement for clearing adventure mode. <laughs> okay, you win. No more eaten brains for us. We just want to make music video with you now. Sincerely, the zombies. Seems very legit. Okay, I say we let him. I can't I can't turn down a cool mu music video with zombies. And this is one of the best credit sequences in any video game, I would say. Thank you, George Fan. Everyone knows the best way to end a game is with an awesome song. And that's exactly what we did here. Man, they know how to groove. the fog on those fog levels came from the fog machine, of course! That is unironically a really good song. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. That, that was really well done. The Bloom and Doom records. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so that's Plants vs. Zombies story mode. But like I said, there's still a lot more to this game that we haven't explored. For example, there's Adventure Mode 2. You can play through Adventure Mode a second time with a new added challenge to it. And some of the levels are slightly different as well. So we'll probably be doing that. Maybe I'll go through it a little faster than uh, last time. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to figure something. But there are also mini games. there's puzzle mode, there's survival mode, and there's a lot of content to all three of those. Not to mention all the achievements that I want to get. And, of course, Zen Garden. So, 
Wow, that's a short credits. Thank you. Oh, thank you, me, for playing? No, thank you for making this game. Like I said, this is, like, the best iPhone game ever. And this is, um... Pfft, like, the best tower defense game ever. It's, it's great. Adventure complete! More minigames, puzzle, and survival modes have been unlocked. Also, check out the new items in Crazy Dave's shop. So, we can restart adventure mode if we want. We now have survival mode. Let's take a look at our Zen Garden. Oh, they need to, they need to be watered again. Well, let's water them up. We almost have enough money for that, uh... For that next, uh, seed, uh, slot. Being able to have nine seeds on a level is quite nice. Especially when you, uh, attempt Adventure Mode 2. I'm not gonna spoil it, but let's just say Adventure Mode 2, you're gonna wanna have as many seed slots available as possible. Difficulty-wise, like, in some ways Adventure Mode 2 is more difficult, in some ways it's easier, because, like, when you play for the earlier levels, you have all of the plants from the later levels as well. Things like Melon Pulse and all that. Alright, if I give them one more bag of fertilizer when they want it, they'll grow to full size, and then we can sell them uh, for a profit. Here, let's go to the shop. Our prices are unbelievable! Crazy Dave's Twitty Dinkies, alright. So, Marigold Sprout will grow in your zig garden. Grow it to full size, it will reward you nicely. So these three are all Marigolds. When you grow Marigolds to full size, you can sell them back for like 3,000. So you will make a net profit off of those. Uh, we can buy the, any of the tools. Uh, here we go. These are some new uh, things here. This mushroom garden is a place you can keep your zen garden plants that fall asleep during the day. So, the Marigolds are what we have in the zen garden. And they're different colored Marigolds, but it doesn't make a difference. Most They were all white in the... Uh, in the iPhone version, but there are ways to get other plants for Zen Garden. You can find them randomly just by playing Adventure Mode. Sometimes you kill a zombie, they'll drop a present, and that'll be a Zen Garden plant. So you can get any type of plant that you find in the game for your Zen Garden, and all the mushrooms will be asleep. You need to put them in the Mushroom Garden to grow them up. And then there's also Aquarium Garden. You can keep your aquatic Zen Garden plants, all three of them. Lily Pad, Tangle Kelp, and Sea Shroom. That's literally it. Then we also have Stinky the Snail. <laughs> Stinky the Snail helps you pick up coins in your Zen Garden. Unlike Gold Magnetrum, this is actually really, really good. Sticky the Snail is one of the best ways that you can actually get money in this game if you're willing to put in the effort of, um, if you're willing to put in the effort of playing every day, basically. More on that later. This is something I don't recognize. The Tree of Wisdom will tell you valuable tips and secrets if you grow it tall enough. So this is new. This was not in the iPhone version. In the iPhone version, this, I think, was bacon, which you could pay a few hundred coins for, and it didn't do anything except make Crazy Dave be delicious. What is this? Purchase some tree food to grow your tree of wisdom nice and tall. Okay, that's new. I'll have to explore that later on. And now, here are the remaining special plants in the game that we want to check out. First, we have Winter Melon. Plant these on your melon pots to turn them into Winter Melons. Winter Melons do heavy damage and slow groups of zombies. So it's literally Melon Pult, but in addition to the, all the damage it deals, it also freezes. And by that I mean slows down like the snow pea. The zombie that it hits, as well as all zombies within a one square radius. So, once you have these... Say goodbye to snow peas. Like, this outclasses snow pea heavily. It's it, it's ridiculously good. One of the best plants in the game. Again, it's not viable on really short levels, but on longer levels, oh man, is it good. And then, speaking of not viable on short levels, we have Cob Cannon. Put these on your kernel pulse to turn them into Cob Cannons. Click on a Cob Cannon to launch a deadly attack. Cob Cannons are the most expensive plant in the game by far, not just for the price tag. It costs 500 sun to plant a Cob Cannon, and you need to plant it on top of two side-by-side -side kernel pulse, so that's 700 sun for one fane. And basically, what it does is, like, every, like, 20 to 30 seconds or so, it basically gives you a free cherry bomb that you can launch anywhere. It's very, very good in large numbers, but again, because it takes so much time to just get one, it's really only viable on the longest levels. And then, this final plant is a weird one. It's Imitator. This Imitator lets you have two of the same plant during a level. So basically, with Imitator, you can be like, I want to take cherry bomb, and I want to take an imitated cherry bomb as well. So you basically have two different cherry bombs that each have their different reset time. So it basically allows you to plant twice as many cherry bombs or whatever you want. So that actually can have some use. However, I don't like it as much as uh, you might think. And then this one's interesting. <laughs> walnut first aid lets you plant fresh new walnuts over damaged ones. Works for tall nuts and pumpkins too. So this means like when your walnuts, tall nuts, or pumpkins get injured, instead of having to wait for it to die or to like shovel it away to plant a new one, you can just plant a new one on top of it and it'll just completely refill its HP. It can be nice to have. But, it's, again, still saving up for that 20,000 seed uh, satchel upgrade. Anyhow, if we go to achievements... So we got all of these. Alright, so there was no... Yeah. 
So the blind, the blind faith achievement where you clear the maximum foggy level without using any, uh, <laughs> without using any planterns or blovers, that's not an achievement in this. But that was an achievement in the iPhone version. I'll try to get the iPhone achievements as well as these as well. <laughs> it's because, you know, I have issues and I like the game too much. But that's Adventure Mode, and that's all the time we have for today. That was an hour-long episode. Hope you guys liked it. Ah, uh, tune in next time. I'm not sure what we're going to do next time. We could start Adventure Mode 2, but I think what I want to do first is explore at least the barebone minigames puzzle and maybe survival mode. At least just play around, see what's there, and then, who knows, maybe we'll start Adventure 2 as well. We'll have to wait and see. So thanks for watching, and until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.